I mean, uh, I'm in a beautiful German city. Hello, Melanie, Jean, Tish, Mardi. Here it's almost, uh, it's almost dark. But uh, and uh, and the tour will be probably shorter than I presume. I said uh, 60 minutes, but probably will be 30 or 40 minutes. Unfortunately, the evangelical church where I uh, plan to enter to visit, it was just closed at 5 p.m. 15 minutes ago. So uh, I will show you only the exteriors of those three squares from uh, from Sibiu. <coughs> it's um, It's a city where I'm sure that you will enjoy it. It was built by the Germans and documentary attested in 1197. Tomorrow where I will be in Sigishwara, Dracula's birthplace for uh, the Halloween tour, which I uh, promised to you. It's pretty animated, uh, the square. It's the big square from Sibiu. And uh, I will wait to enter in the last minute before to start the tour. This is the council tower one of the towers of the second lines of fortification of the city. The people are on the terraces. It's Sunday evening. <laughs> they are ready for uh, a new day of work since tomorrow. And the city was built entirely by the German colonists brought in here by the Hungarian kingdom in the 12th century after the conquest of Transylvania from the Romanians. <clears throat> the Hungarian occupation stayed here for about 800 years and um, starting with 1868 when appeared the Austro-Hungarian Empire they had a very a very long dominance in here interrupted from time to time from the rebellions of the Romanians, which wants the occupant out of their land. They finally fulfilled this desire only in uh, 1918 after the Great War, when Transylvania uh, get united with uh, the rest of Romania. <coughs> and here are a lot, of, uh, a lot of houses, a lot of palaces. Uh, built by uh, built by Germans, Sibiu was a very important uh, uh, center of uh, of the commerce from Transylvania because the main uh, commercial route from Istanbul from the Orient to the Occident was passing by here. So the artisans and the uh, uh, guilds were very powerful in uh, in this city. What you can see right now. It's uh, the actual city hall of the city, this beautiful uh, Baroque building, which I will show you to you closer in a couple of minutes. And uh, it used to be a bank previously and was built on a place where um, it used to be houses of the artisans and of the merchandisers from the city. They demolish it and uh, at the, in the second half of the 19th century, they built the city hall and this beautiful uh, Baroque Hungarian Roman Catholic Church, which after the reform uh, continued to be, uh, to be Roman Catholic. And also they built, um, they built the palace of Samuel von Bruckenthal, the governor of Transylvania in those times and a very important collectioner of, uh, of the area. Here uh, in uh, front of you is this small house with some lions depicted in fresco above the windows. 
It used to be the house of uh, one of the mayors of Sibiu in the 16th century. And you can see into the attic, the openings into the ceiling of the house are looking out, are looking like uh, the eyes which are uh, watching you from up there. It's a characteristic of Sibiu, uh, this uh, piece of architecture, these eyes which are looking to the people. And um, I said, let's Baroque because uh, this is the truth. It's a Baroque city. This house from here, it was another palace of the one of the representatives of the Germans in the Parliament of Transylvania, because uh, Transylvania, starting with 1526, became an independent principate under the protectorate of the Ottoman Empire. Welcome, Cynthia. I read your message. Thank you very much. I'm glad that you enjoyed last night the transmission from Dracula's castle during the, their party at Halloween. Even that, as I said, it was my worst tour in <laughs> the last 17 years since I am a guide. It was a it was a craziness in that in that castle last night full of people. And uh, here uh, I can show you another houses. For example, this orange one, which is in front of you right now. Uh, it used to be the headquarter of the Habsburgic and Austrian army in Transylvania for a long period of time. And near it, it's another blue one where they uh, established the first uh, law school of Transylvania in the same, uh, in the same period. And speaking about uh, Samuel von Bruckenthal, the Baron, which built this beautiful palace, also on the place of uh, some um, of some uh, artisans' houses and merchandises houses, he was a very important collectioner of uh, of the city. He collected paintings, he collected coins, uh, he collected uh, artifacts, archaeological artifacts found it into the into the land of Transylvania. One of the most precious, it speaks about the fact that after the retreat of the Roman army, uh, here in Transylvania, Romanians continued to live and to be Christians because uh, the Romanian language and the Romanian nation were born uh, between the century th uh, three and five uh, after Christ. And um, they, um, they were one of the fewest nations in this world which uh, became Christians before to become a nation because those uh, Dacian Romans, as we call them, Dacian because of our direct ancestors, the Dacian tribes, which lived in uh, on our territory since um, 2000 years ago. And Dacia was the name of Romania during of the antiquity. And uh, from this combination between the Roman colonists and the Dacians was born the Romanian nation from today. So we are a Latin a Latin country with uh, with a Latin language like French, Italian, or Spanish, and uh, the Baron, uh, which have a statue, uh, which was displayed here uh, two years ago. It's uh, one of the most important uh, characters of uh, of this uh, Romanian territory, where Dracula was uh, personified as a ruler for. Um, by Mr. Bram Stoker, which wrote his uh, his beautiful novel, uh, Dracula. Uh, Dracula was, uh, as you know or you don't, uh, he was uh, a Valachian ruler. Valachia, it was the name of the south of Romania from today. It's a region. And the name, it came from uh, old German word, Wallen, which was meaning uh, population speaking the Latin language. And when the Germans were attacked by the Slavs, the Slavs were defeated. The Slavs are the ancestors of the Russians, Bulgarians, Serbians, Czechs, Polish uh, nations. This is Samuel from Bukental, his statue. And um, when they met the Romanians, uh, they took this word, Valen, Vlachen, and uh, they called us Vlachen or Valaks, and our country 
uh, Valachia because uh, we are the uh, Latin speakers uh, from this area. This is the city hall of Sibiu, as I told you. It's a beautiful Baroque building uh, built at the end of the 19th century. Baroque is presented everywhere here in, uh, here in Sibiu. And um, the coat of arms of the city, I will show it to you uh, very soon. It speaks about the fact that the German name of the city, it's, uh, it's Hermannstadt, because it's considered that the first knight which founded the city was a German called Hermann. And the coat of arms, you can see it right here. And uh, represents the fact that two knights carrying swords, they built a city surrounded by walls those lines displays into a triangle a uh, city uh, surrounded by walls also surrounded by lakes with water lily flowers if you see the water lily flowers here in three in three parts and this city surrounded by walls and lakes with water lily flowers doesn't pay taxes to the hungarian crown which is on top the name of sibiu came from uh, from a river which uh, crossed the city called Chibin, came from a Latin word Chibinium, from Chibinium was transformed in Sibiu. And uh, this is the explanation of the, actually of the name of the city uh, from today. The Germans developed uh, a very large and very well um, organized uh, city and defended city. And Dracula, the Valachian ruler, he had some um, commercial treaties with them, uh, according with, uh, with uh, them. So they were speaking what kind of goods they can sell in Valachia, what kind of goods the Valachian, the Romanians can uh, sell in uh, Transylvania. And because they broke the, this treaty, Vlad Dracula, Vlad the Impaler, uh, uh, attacked the city couple of times and because he wasn't capable to conquer it, to occupy it, he impaled a lot of Germans. And from here, the stories about his cruelty and those stories, uh, many of them written on paper, were discovered by, um, by, by, by Bram Stoker, which uh, started to develop his, uh, his character Dracula. Actually, the name Dracula uh, it means, as I wanted, uh, as I like to, to to joke, the son of his father, because the father of Dracula was called uh, Vlad Dracul. Dracul in Romanian it means devil, because uh, he was member of the Dragon's Order, an order of knights which was fighting against the Ottoman Empire and have as a coat of arms a dragon, obviously. <clears throat> and uh, because in our mythology, the dragon it's the image of the devil. Uh, he was called by the Romanians, he was nicknamed, if you want, Vlad the Devil. So his son was called Dracula or Dracula, which it means the son of the devil. And um, he was a luxury prisoner in his childhood to the Ottoman Empire at the court of the Sultan Murad the third, the, the third. And he studied with one of the sons of the Sultan, Mohammed, the future Sultan Mohammed II, uh, the conqueror of Constantinople in uh, 1453. So from the Ottomans, Vlad learned uh, all the way of life of them, how they fight, how they punish. And this punishment with the, uh, with the spike was uh, taken uh, from them. The execution was a very simple one to explain it to you, but very cruel in the same time. Uh, the victim uh, was uh, laid on the ground they displayed a very thick beam of wood, sharpened on one of the uh, play, uh, on one of the sides. Uh, they <coughs> put it in between the ash cheeks of the person with two big hammers, and then they lift it up. And under their own weight, that person was uh, impaled himself into the spike, and was a very long and agonizing death, which could be like two days of uh, of agonizing till till that. So uh, in this way, he, um, he make order in his country. This is the evangelical church, which I told you before. And uh, 
was a cruel enough character for uh, for the vampire coming from the mythology of the Irish, uh, which uh, our uh, Bram Stoker uh, wrote it. But the, this uh, this evangelical church was built before in 1290 for the first time as a small uh, Romanic uh, church, which was developed little by little into the evangelical cathedral that you can see it now in front of you. And they finished in 1524, the construction of this church. The tower is uh, very high, as you can see. It's not the highest in Transylvania. Uh, the highest is in Bistrița. It's another city placed in the north of the province. And the story, uh, pretty much a funny one. It says that uh, the Germans from Sibiu, when they started to build the tower, they wanted to have the highest tower in the province. So they uh, traveled to Bistrița. Uh, trying to measure the trying to measure the tower from from there and in this purpose they took with them uh, a very long rope they get on the tower of the church from Bistrița they left the rope to the ground and they cut it to have the sign of the dimension of course they were seen uh, by the Germans from Bistrița and they thought that it's something strange with those guys which are launching a long rope from the top of their tower. So they ask them what is all about. And because the Germans from Sibiu doesn't want to tell them, they invite them to drink something. And after many, many drinks, they get drunk, the Germans from Sibiu, and uh, they told them to their people from Bistica that they were trying to measure the tower, to making their tower higher <laughs> than, uh, than the one from Bistica. And then, as you imagine, the people from Bistica cut Two meters <laughs> for that rope and when they arrive in in Sibiu and they build the tower the tower is even today with two meters lower than the one from Bistica so they didn't succeed <laughs> in their uh, attempt to have the highest uh, the highest tower from from Transylvania in front of the church uh, you can see a statue which belongs to uh, to Teutsch it's one of the um, leaders of the Germans from uh, from Sibiu and from Transylvania in the same time. He was a priest uh, in the same time. And uh, you can see him here, uh, keeping his right hand uh, on uh, some documents placed on a very small column. The documents uh, are showing his, uh, his work into the service of the Germans uh, from, uh, from Transylvania. On the... At the entrance of this church, on the stairs, it was murdered the son of Vlad the Impaler, uh, Michnea the Bad One, which uh, was a very cruel, uh, which was a very cruel person like his father, and uh, he was murdered here and buried inside of the inside of this church. Of course, his body was stayed here uh, for many centuries, together with the bodies of um, another mayors. Uh, representatives of the Germans into the Parliament of Transylvania, rich people, governors, uh, till uh, the beginning of the 20th century, when uh, from sanitary, for sanitary reasons, they remove all the bones, all the, all the corpses from the, from the church, and they bury it right here in front of you, where is that tree, uh, into the land of, uh, of Sibiu, under a green under green grass and flowers uh, just to stay uh, in here for the rest of the time i will tell you i will told you actually i was told you before about the guilds so somewhere here are the bones of Mihna the bad one the son of Vlad the impaler buried and um, those guilds were very power uh, unions no actually of the um, of the artisans from the medieval city and uh, they were very powerful very rich and it was a real honor for somebody to be member of a guild so uh, for a very specific reason which i will reveal you at the end to be a member of a guild first of all you have to be a boy it was campus tree not because of the misogyny but because of another very strong reason in those times. And you have to be 
a boy of 14, 16 years old, and uh, you um, are working as an apprentice for about two years. And after two years, uh, you, you have to get an exam to prove your qualities and uh, your, uh, your skills, no? And then you, were, uh, you have the right to leave the locality and to go in um, and to travel into other cities to, to work and to sell your work and to leave from your work just to practice like a very long practice and um, only after that you have uh, you have the possibility to come back to your city for the final exam here it's a very small cafe near of uh, one of the old walls all defensive walls of the city so um, this uh, this custom this tradition of the apprentices traveling <coughs> It still exists in Europe, in Germany, in Switzerland, in Austria. And even today, uh, apprentices are coming uh, here in Sibiu, in Transylvania, where they are working as blacksmiths, as uh, workers in timber, as weavers, as, uh, I don't know, bread makers. They uh, are traveling, they have a very specific costume. They are looking like this. They are living in Sibiu for uh, a month or two during of the summertime, working, as you can see here, for the city and receiving in exchange not a wage, but food and a place to stay. And that place to stay is this house, is the house of the apprentices from Sibiu. And that uh, piece of beam where the children are now, um, it was uh, designed for the uh, blacksmith's guild, which left in, uh, into this beam of wood uh, a piece of metal uh, made by them just to, just to be remembered by the people from the village. You can see a site up there. Nails and uh, many other things made by metal, coins just to be remembered till they will come back. And when they come back, after two years of traveling uh, and working, uh, they were sustain another exam, another final exam, where they have made by them, something extraordinary made by them. And uh, they have to get married with one of the daughters. So this was the reason to be a boy, to be able to get married with one of the daughters, just to keep the, the business in the family, <laughs> I, I would say. Uh, this is the house of the priest of the church. All the priests have their own houses, um, or used to have their own houses here in Transylvania. And uh, even today into the Greek Orthodox Church, which is majority in Romania, we are about 89% Greek Orthodox. Uh, in every village, in every city, the congregation of Greek Orthodox uh, put at the disposal and at the use of the priest a house which is designed uh, for him to live there with all his family uh, during the time that uh, he's working as a priest for that community. Uh, I said with his family because um, the Greek Orthodox priest, um, comparing with the Roman Catholic ones, they have to get married if they want to become a priest. Uh, this is one of the rules from, uh, from our church. So that's why I said uh, that them and their families uh, are coming here and uh, they have their own house. You can see the church from this side too. The church was, uh, was repaired and renovated in the last two years, in the last five years actually. Uh, two years, uh, five years ago, they started to remove and to change the tiles of the, um, of the roof. And uh, then it was like one year of, uh, of a break from the renovations, so the tourists and the people could visit the church 
And two years ago, uh, during the pandemic, they started to um, uh, to repair the, the church again, to paint it, uh, to paint it uh, from the exterior, and um, they finish it. Uh, they finish it this year in uh, in January, February. Speaking about uh, artisans and things made in uh, here in Sibiu, I want to tell you that here uh, we have the first uh, cast iron bridge made in Transylvania and in Romania. It's uh, right in front of us. I will cross. Uh, I will cross it over. Welcome, Ralu. So um, this cast iron bridge was called uh, the Liars Bridge for a very, uh, very for a very good reason. When they started to build it, when they finished to build it, they, uh, the pavement of the bridge was um, made by thick beams of wood, which wasn't fixed very well on the bridge. So it was creaking and was moving, giving you the sensation that the bridge will collapse with you in any moment. So uh, for this reason, uh, appeared the legend which said that uh, if you will tell a lie over this bridge, the bridge will collapse with you in a moment. So from here, we have the name of uh, this bridge as the Liars Bridge. So if you come here, be careful, don't tell lies, <laughs> because it will create a damage to the city hall and they will <laughs> put you to pay it. So um, here it's, uh, it's, a, it's a street which goes to the lower city as they are calling it, because the city uh, up here, it's built on a, on a small hill. And uh, here I'm uh, already into the small square of the city. So from the great square, uh, we came to the, uh, to the Huet Square, where is the church, the cathedral, and now to the, um, uh, to the small square. And this street that you can see in front of you, uh, it used to be around 1400, a tunnel, which made the connection between the upper city where we are now and the lower city. And uh, around 1600, they removed the tunnel, built some houses. And finally, around 1800, they removed the houses and built the actual street, which remain uh, till today. Here into the small square, we have the, um, uh, or we, we had actually, the square where uh, the people coming to buy and sell fish vegetables and these kind of things uh, not parties not executions those ones were uh, reserved uh, to the great uh, square of the city and from here you can see the the tower the the council tower uh, from uh, from this side it was also a watchtower uh, designed to uh, to let you see everything which has happened into the city like fires, invasions, disorders, uh, any kind of things like this. And also here, we still have uh, some, of the, um, some of the houses of the merchandisers and of the artisans from Sibiu, which uh, you can see it right in front of you. Uh, they, were, they were houses uh, with uh, one floor for the family to live. And at the ground floor, uh, they had the shops, they have stores. Where they sell uh, where they sell their goods also uh, one of the oldest pharmacies in Romania it's uh, displayed here in uh, in one of those houses and uh, at the bottom of the of the council tower we have uh, one of the most uh, oldest restaurants in Sibiu this building which I zooming right now it's uh, Casa Sibiana one of the oldest restaurant uh, of the city and um, telling you about uh, about Sibiu uh, everything which uh, is now here renovated and rearranged it was started in 2006 when the city was preparing uh, to be in 2007 the European capital of culture uh, every year each year a city from Europe it's uh, designed uh, to be the cultural capital, so that's why they are preparing very well, because they have a lot of concerts, a lot of events uh, displayed here into the city uh, for um, oh, on that year. Here, 
uh, almost in uh, at the end of the renovations. This big white house, uh, it used to be the butcher's headquarter of the butcher's guild from Sibiu. It's one of the fewest houses, fewest uh, headquarters of the guilds, which still standing in, uh, in Sibiu. And uh, this, uh, this house, it uh, belongs to one of the richest families from Sibiu, the Luxembourg family, which uh, in the meantime, uh, their, uh, their uh, descendants uh, took it back in, uh, in court. So um, now they are, uh, they are still living in here. It's one of the, um, one of the oldest families in, uh, in this city. So um, Sibiu uh, remain, um, remain even, uh, even today a center of culture. They have a very beautiful uh, history museum. Plus they have the collection of uh, Samuel von Bruckenthal, which now it's, uh, it, was, it, it became uh, the Brukenthal Museum from Sibiu, the art museum from here. And um, the fact that um, the son of Vlad the Impaler was uh, buried in this, uh, in this city, it's one of the most important characters of, uh, of Sibiu and of the Romanian history, which lies in here. Actually, I think uh, many places in Transylvania and in Romania are connected with the personality of Vlad the Impaler and uh, of uh, his descendants. Even that, uh, the one from Europe, because um, as King Charles III of Great Britain uh, was saying many, many times, uh, his family, uh, it's a descendant of the family of, uh, of Vlad the Impaler. Of course, uh, King Charles III, the former Prince Charles, of Great Britain uh, do not make the official announce yet, probably because it's uh, pretty difficult to um, prove all the links between the descendants of Vlad the Impaler and the ones uh, from the court of the Great Britain. But uh, if someday this, this will be something absolutely amazing for the whole Europe that the family of uh, Vlad the Impaler of Dracula is still uh, surviving and is still living uh, through the descendants of the of the British throne, you know. and um, King Charles had some uh, properties in Romania, in one of the German villages, uh, the one from Viscri, where he uh, had a home. And the villagers uh, from there, uh, they were very close to to him. He was a very he was a very nice person, um, coming there uh, every year in the last 20 years, staying like two weeks per year at his home from Viscri and uh, being basically like one of the villagers. And now uh, they are joking, saying that unfortunately their, their neighbor, Charles, uh, is not living anymore in Viscri because he was forced to go to work in England <laughs> as a king. So uh, they are very proud of, uh, of this neighbor of them. And now I'm uh, under, the, um, under the council tower from Sibiu, coming back, to, uh, coming back to the big square from the city and uh, preparing myself to end the tour in here because the, uh, the dark, it's almost, uh, it's almost complete here and uh, the view is not so good as uh, I would like to be. But anyway, this uh, half night tour of Sibiu have uh, its charm uh, for you because uh, you have the opportunity to see that it's like any other European city. It's not any difference between Sibiu and uh, any other beautiful square of Europe from Rome to Vienna. So that's why I invite you to come here for the future if you want it to do. Uh, tonight, uh, at 10 o'clock, at 10 p.m. Romanian time, I will be, uh, um, I will be in Sigishwara on Dracula's birthplace, and uh, I will be able to present you and to show you the dark streets from one of the oldest medieval cities of Europe. And anyway, uh, Sigishwara, Dracula's birthplace, it's 
one of the fewer cities of Europe, medieval cities of Europe, which is still inhabited by the people and preserved a very high percentage from its uh, fortification systems. Uh, it lost only two towers and 200 meters from the walls. So um, you will be able to tomorrow night to see all of those things together with a detailed story of Vlad the Impaler and uh, of the Romanian mythology involving undeads and all kinds of other spirits. We don't have many, but uh, as we have, I will tell you tomorrow all the stories. Uh, now, uh, I will tell you as usual, good morning, good day and good night, depending on what meridian you are. And I will end the tour in Sibiu with this beautiful picture of the Great Square, waiting for you to, uh, to follow me uh, tomorrow night for the tour, which I will do into the Halloween night on Dracula's birthplace. Bye bye to you all.